Dink dink. Dink 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 This is a special super spooky Hella fucking scary. It's scary at how ghetto this podcast is. <laughs> <laughs> just like Our mic died, we have one camera, we're in the dark, we're at a hotel room, but it's okay because we're gonna tell ghost stories tonight. It's festive. It's, festive. it's, festive. Almost, it's almost Halloween. And we're joined by the From Mackle. 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 Mackle and Debbie Machine. Yay. Introduce yourself, machine. Machina. Okay. <laughs> is this time number four for you on the podcast? I don't know. Yeah, it is. Oh my gosh. I'm, getting, I'm getting. I'm starting my own series. series. Yeah, you need your own podcast. Hands up in the mix tape. Too, so. the mix oh, tape. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> <laughs> so. Uh, yeah, this episode is brought to you by Texture. Uh, Texture is an awesome way to read all of your magazines in one place. Go to texture.com slash Jen and Julian to get started for free. Right now, you okay? How, yes. How's everything going over there? Good. Okay. So we thought we thought it'd be fun to have. It's also brought to you by SmileDirectClub.com. Wow, that Debbie. Awesome ways with 3D cutting edge technology to get your teeth corrected. Uh, check out the link in the description. We'll be. I'll explain it all later. It's pretty awesome. All right, now to the ghost stories. All right, so we here thought we are. it'd be really fun. We're in Toronto, by the way. Yeah. For Buffer Fest. For Buffer Fest, and we thought it'd be really fun since we told you or I told you some of my ghost stories in the last podcast, not the two podcasts ago, or last one. Last one. Last one. Um, we did want to have some other people because most people were suggesting that we had people on to tell scary stories. Yeah. So because we had to travel, you know, the yeah. best we could do is the Debbie and the Mackle, but they have some good stories. We haven't heard them. I haven't heard these. So are you guys excited or what? Yeah, I'm excited. All right. So yeah. I, I don't really have any ghost stories, but I did m- mention the same as Jenna that I heard some from this foreigner. I'll sit back here. I'm scared. I'm scared. All right, so <laughs> who would like to go first? Okay. Yeah, you go first. So now it's Mackle's turn. Mackle's going to go Mackle. first. I'm going to hand Mackle my phone, mm-hmm. and she's going to tell a ghost story. Okay. And we all have to be quiet unless we want to say something. Okay. It's fun like this, though. Okay. Fun. But feel free to ask questions. Okay. okay. Why? Oh, not Well, yet. no, just in case. Oh. It's not mandatory. I was asking a question. I have oh. a question. Um, okay, so this is true story, right? This is now. I generally don't believe ghost stories because I immediately assume that the person is, you know, just kind of pulling the chain. But this um, happened to my parents, um, and they uh, uh, tell me the story off not often, but whenever I ask, and um, I think it's fucking crazy it's super nuts so um in a suburb of um in sydney called chatswood it's kind of an established suburb with like nice old houses this house is you know um, built in the late 1800s early 1900s so it's a very old beautiful old home that had been uh various different things um in its lifetime it had been a boarding house for old, like older people. It had been um, Just not a home. Old people or like crazy old people. No, I think Super normal old no, people. No, I think normal, <laughs> normal old people. Right. Just regular old people. Going off the rails already here. So, so take, 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 take. So, um, the my parents lived there. My dad is a twin, so my parents lived there for two years before what? they got married. Identical? Your dad's a twin. Yeah, Hal and Jim. Hal and Jim. Mm-hmm. They're twins, and their dad is a twin. Ah! Yeah. Crazy. Why do I always they're, find they're out famous. people have twins? They're famous. Those they're, McElroy boys are famous in, in Australia. So, uh, Hal and Jim and, and my mom, before they were married, um, moved into this house. Hal and Jim bought the house. They moved in, the three of them. And the minute they moved in, strange things started to happen. And mom says... That the minute she moved in, she knew that there was something there. She was never frightened by it. She never felt threatened by it. But she knew. Every, even Dad, who's not super perceptive with that kind of stuff, like he's, you know, he was, he knew that, everyone just kind of knew there was something kind of yeah. there. So, 
um, because they were, you know, these kind of successful young guys, you know, my, my dad obviously was with my mum at the time, but Uncle Jim was a little, you know, he was a bit of a playboy and whatever. So they used to have parties often and, and the two guys would travel making, you know, films and whatever and mum was at home. Um, so a lot of, there were a lot of, you know, different things that happened. So a couple of the stories that they, they have told, um, uh, they, would, they once had a, a huge party and there were, you know, maybe 20, 30 people in the room. And there was this huge crash in the kitchen through double doors from the living room where they were all having this party, um, was these double doors into this kitchen and, um, a huge crash. Like mum describes it as being, it sounded as though the cupboards on the walls and everything inside them had crashed to the floor. Oh my God. Everyone, 30 people in the room were like, holy shit, what was that? Like everyone. They all like, whoa, thinking there was, you know, the kitchen had exploded. Right. And um, they ran in, nothing's out of place. Another thing I should mention from day one their dog refused to come in the house. That's mm. a bad sign. Which is a really bad, bad sign. sign. Really, really, and I it even get yeah. funny. Yeah. yeah. Really, and the so mum, mum, yeah, mum was always like, that's weird. I'm so, sensing something. This is, and then shit started to happen. Yeah. Nothing was out of place in the kitchen? Like everyone Nothing was. was out of place. But everyone heard it. Yeah. Another time there was, mum said there was 20 people in the living room, same living room, um, and the doors double doors like french doors out to the patio balcony veranda thing um flew open like burst open everyone went whoa shit like like you were scared you were there by you it. Saw it. You could... there was 20 people in the room it flew open everyone was like what the fuck and yeah. then slammed shut <gasps> no 20 people can say 100 percent we saw that with our own eyes what the fuck uh another time um so so like I said, my, my uncle was single, right? And so he'd have girls come over and stay and whatever. And any house guests that they ever had that would stay um, all woke up. They didn't know one another. They would all wake up saying the same thing, that they felt as though they had a hot poker going through <gasps> their heads and that half their body was fire and half their body was ice. Okay. And they, this is literally, these women didn't know one another. They, some of them were dating Uncle Jim. Some of them were just like friends who were staying over after a party. I mean, it was a big old, you know, house that was the party house. And so people yeah. would you know, come and go. So, um, and then um, uh, one of the craziest ones for me, I think this is nuts. Mum said that, like, like I said, she was never threatened by this presence, right? Um, if anything, you know, it kind of became like just like part of every day, you know. Um, she said there was this door, the back door, that she would go and physically shut the door and f lock it, yeah. turn the lock, yeah. the bolt. And she would come back. Like when Uncle Jim and Hal were out of town, she was there in the house alone. She would come back after a minute or something, and the door was physically open, ajar. Shut up. And so she'd be like, "Ah oh, man, I just want to go to bed. Like, right. oh, come on, Can like, please let me lock." This? Yeah, and so she'd shut it and lock it and walk away and be like, "Are we done?" Like, mm. you so know, she's so really she's nice like totally yeah. chill by. You're a cute ghost. Yeah, we'll have to lock the door. Yeah, now. thank right, you. Let's be um, friends, right? So, mum and dad ended up, ended up marri getting married in the front yard of the house, and um, they lived there for four years, two years prior to their marriage, and then two years after. And um, so, they loved the house. It's not like you know this ghost like you know scared them out of town. Yeah. Um, so then, uh, one night, um, a uh, they were having another party and mum was telling the stories of all the happenings to someone at the party and one of their other guests overheard and said um oh yeah I, you know you have someone here her name is amelia gillingchrist she was the housekeeper for a family that lived here how long ago i don't know yeah but um and she and she she said Amelia is leading me over to um, this linen closet, which is where she did, like, most of her work was folding the linens and putting them in this closet. And so, you know, mum was like, yeah, like, like, yeah, that's the linen closet. And um, 
uh, she said that she perceived that Amelia fancied my uncle. And so, so whenever he had girls, whenever over. he had girls over, she was <laughs> jealous, and she was like, "Oh my god!" Yeah, she was like a a, a woman, you know, in her twenties or thirties. You yeah. know, like she was the housekeeper. So, so yeah. I didn't realize that was a thing. Like ghosts can like they get attached oh, yeah. to people. people. They attach yeah. themselves to people, whether you know. And apparently, um, Dad said the other day that apparently um, the story goes that she had lost her husband tr like tragically and that this this friend of theirs was saying that she was um like trapped in exile or something mm. like she mm. couldn't leave because you know yeah. there was and so i guess her husband died tragically so she kind of attached herself to uncle jim mm. yeah crazy that's wild. crazy and then my uh, my oh, other ghost just wanted story uncle jim yeah to her i know right friends with her <laughs> I know. She would open the dark. She was trying to go find the good Yeah. And, 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 you know. Aw, oh, man, shucks. Ghosts. I know. They're just like us. <laughs> well, I'm over here. Ghosts. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You got one more room? Mm -hmm. All right. Knuckle, you're up. Okay. So my other story is a little more recent. It involves uh, Colin, my husband, and I. And he was... Oh, when, I think I remember this. When I was living with him... Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. When I first met him, he was living with his brother and um, his brother's girlfriend um, in a really cool old bungalow in Santa Monica. And um, there had been some things that had happened, like doors kind of closing. Um, Harper, who's my now sister-in-law, would say that um, you know, she would wake up and the door was, you know, closing slowly and squeaking yeah. and, you know, things like that, but they could somewhat be explained. Um, but then, uh, there, they had, um, lead light doors to the cabinets in the kitchen. Yeah. And you know, that lead light just makes it that really distinctive flickering. Well, no, 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 like the, the glass panels shaking when they're not secured in the lead. Right. They that make sounds, that kind of rattling. Yeah. It sounds like what... Yeah, yeah, it's kind of like this rattling like yeah. of the glass, yeah. you know, because it's... Yeah. And, um, and Harper would be there alone. The boys were out, whatever, and Harper would be there alone. She could hear the kitchen mm -hmm. things rattling, mm -hmm. you know, which again could be explained whatever, whether it's a... Maybe it's an earthquake or something, I don't know. So the first night that I um, went on a, I think Colin and I had been dating for a little while, but it was the first time that we went on like a, a group date with his brother and Harper, um, his now wife. So the four of us went out to dinner and a movie, whatever. We came back, sitting in the kitchen. All four. Uh, I think Cam and Harper were in the other room. So it was just Colin and I. And we were sitting at the bar in the kitchen, and there were, I was on one stool, Colin was at the table, and there was a stool in between us. And um, we were just having a normal conversation, and the stool moved an inch, slid across and moved an inch. And at first, it was so like weird and small, and we were kind of here, and it happened down here, that we kept talking and then after a minute we were, I was like did you see that yeah and he goes fuck yeah I didn't want to say anything because I totally think this house is haunted yeah. and that like I, I was too scared to kind of tell you <laughs> and I was like I totally just saw that yeah. so I didn't know of the happenings that you know so then a couple of weeks later we were uh watching a movie on the couch Cam and Harper were gone um sitting on the sofa and a uh, really cool old bungalow right that had the ceiling had been taken out and so it was just the rafters with the exposed yeah, beams this is the one that i remember so yeah, I remember we were we were lying on the couch watching this movie and all the lights were off um and we both saw um a, it was a mass Whoa. i don't know how to describe it other than like a cloud move from the teep uh, across the ceiling above us and i'm literally getting tingles yeah. like it was fucking terrifying and i immediately said i just saw something and colin goes i did too he goes did you see it right there and i said no i saw it there mm. i we literally saw it moving across the room above us so fucking weird yeah, ah! yeah. 
And so that was, I mean, it was, it was, I only experienced those two, but those guys living there, like Colin yeah. was like, it would ha- often, there would just be things like doors shutting, things moving, you know, but it being like, you'd put that there and then, you know, just yeah. like weird stuff like that, that you could, you know, but, but I physically saw the chair move. And a black mass. And a, and a mass move above me. <laughs> yeah. It was what, crazy. Like, if you were to describe the, the mass, like, like, um... Cloudy. Like a cloud. No, it wasn't like a, like an opaque cloud. It was, it was like, I, uh, like, what's the... What, uh, like you know Ghastly like a, the Pokemon? Like the dark, the black cloud? Uh, I don't know what a fucking po- I don't know what a Pokemon... No, you know, um, I mean, I, I honestly don't know what to compare it to, but it's like... It, it was almost like smoke. Okay. You could see through it, yeah. you but you could see, see. But it was almost kind of as it moved. It kind of just like amorphous, like it kept kind of changing shape. It changed shape, and it wasn't a round object, but it was roundish. But it yeah. was. It looked like a cloud, like as in it, it had no. Moving. But it was moving. And so, but then it was clear. You could see through it, but it would almost distort things as it moved. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So you mm-hmm. you could definitely, even in your peripheral, you could see that it was moving. And you it, know what I mean? You you saw it physically move. Or? I saw it physically go from here to here, and Colin saw it go from here to there. So you had both. You both saw it move, both and you both it. had it by like, you know, adding up the two we, facts that both you and saw. And we both were like. Holy shit! Did you just see that? Yeah. So we we and he, you do? we both we both said at the same time. Oh my god! Did you just see that? And I was like, yes, I saw it go from there there. And he was like, I saw it above, at the same time. Fuck. Yeah. And so what, and what did you for the rest of the night? I was fucking terrified. I was so... But I lived in Hollywood at the time, so driving back from Santa Monica, Hollywood, it was like just so I had to. But I mean, every time I stayed over there, I was. Yeah. It was uneasy. I just felt. It, it, yeah, and I, and Colin said that when he moved out, when he and I got a place together from there, and um, he, when you know everyone had moved out, he was the last one there cleaning up late at night, and no, uh, I think no, a, thank you. I think a broom fell. Asleep. It wasn't even a ghostly yeah. thing. It was like him tripping or something. But he was like ter- ran out of the house and was like yeah. never going back. I don't even care if the house is dirty. I don't get my deposit. I, yeah. I can't go back in there. That's so scary. Yeah, yeah. fucking terrifying. Jeez. Yeah. So I'm a true believer. Wow, like that makes me honestly just like yeah. Because as much as you're like mackle, like yeah. I do trust you. Well, I'm not gonna lie about something like that. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like. Yeah. Real quickly, guys, this spooky episode of the Jenna Julian podcast is brought to you by SmileDirectClub.com. SmileDirectClub uses proprietary cutting-edge technology, basically 3D printing, to help avoid the inconvenience and cost of visiting your dentist or orthodontist, which can cut costs up to 70%. SmileDirectClub aligners cost a single payment of $1,500 with the lab costs waived, and other invisible aligner brands can cost up to $5,000 on average. Or you can take advantage of an easy payment plan with only $250 down and $99 a month for 15 months no credit check required treatment time averages from five months but ranges from three to ten months it can also be an easy solution for people who have had braces but failed to wear the retainers and teeth shifted back right now you can save 50 percent off the cost of the smile direct club evaluation by visiting smiledirectclub.com slash jenna julian unfortunately this is unavailable in north carolina but everywhere else in the u.s you can access this check it out it's smiledirectclub.com slash jenna julian it's also brought to you by texture guys you know we love texture thanks to pizza we're all binge eating thanks to netflix we're all binge watching but now with texture you can start binge reading trust me it's about to be a thing when it comes to magazines guys you know what you like i know what i like i like men's fitness i actually read bicycling sometimes backpacker automobile depending on my mood there's tons and tons and tons of magazines on the texture app and you can tap into them with your smartphone anywhere anytime with the texture app you even get certain articles and magazines curated for you depending on what you're reading by textures team which is awesome. It's a great way to discover new content. And right now, you can get a free trial with Texture by going to texture.com slash Jenna Julian. You'll gain immediate entry into all the top magazines, including back issues and bonus video content. So start binge reading for free right now when you go to texture.com slash Jenna Julian. That's texture.com slash Jenna Julian. It is now the Debbie Machine's Webby turn. Machine. By the Webby way, machine. it's pretty much just going to be us reacting to Debbie and Rob right? stories. Yeah. yeah, okay, here you go. <laughs> I'm, I feel 
like I could listen to people tell oh, yeah, stories. Oh, no, yeah, I love it. But I you told me all yours last week, and I don't have any. So, yeah. yeah. Just make one up. It's okay. So the first story I'm going to tell is about when I was in college, and my sister lived with a woman, um, I think her name was Christine, but she was a, she read tarot cards, but she didn't like doing it because it scared her. Fair but enough. But she had done it for a long time. She, mm-hmm. I don't know if she had grown up doing it or whatever. Um, but she was a very serious person. So she, it wasn't like the kind of thing where you looked at her and went, oh, you know, she's kind of a flake, you know. Mm-hmm. But for some reason she decided to read, uh, I don't know if it was just me or whatever, she read, she read these cards and she, I had just moved, I had come back from Europe and I had just got in an apartment with another woman and we were, this was in Western Massachusetts and the apartment was pretty far out, but we had just signed a lease and we had moved in there and I had gone back down to Cape Cod to visit my sister and with, with uh, Christine, I think her name was. And um, so she's reading my tarot cards and she said, um, well, first of all, you're gonna live with a dark haired man. And I'm thinking to myself, I just rented an apartment. I'm not going to live with another guy. There's no, there's two rooms. We're not going to get some guy to live there. It doesn't make any sense. So I didn't say anything out loud. And then I said, then she goes, and you know, there's going to be a dog that lives there too. And I'm like, I'm allergic to dogs. No dog's going to come. This is ridiculous. And then she said, and the last thing is, you're going to find something that's very valuable. She said, but it's very. I'm getting goosebumps just thinking about it. She said, it's very strange because it's very cold, this object. And you're not going to know that it's valuable. But when you realize that it's valuable, she said, I don't understand. Why is it cold? She said, at first I thought it was like a gem or something, maybe like, you know, an ice, like a diamond or something that was like cold. But she said, that's not it. She said, it's just, it's freezing cold and it's, you have it and you don't know how valuable it is. So I'm like, yeah, okay, fine. And, um, but she was very convincing. She was had a very like nice style about her. So I go back to college and it turns out that we met this guy that we went to community college with. And he said, oh, I, have a, I just rented an apartment. I need two roommates. And um, I'm just getting goosebumps just mm-hmm. talking about it. And he said, uh, and we're like, you know what? That apartment that we rented, it's too far out. I wanted to let us out of our rent, uh, out of our lease. And he did. The guy let us out of our lease and we moved in with this dark-haired guy oh right Richard right and so I'm starting to get like okay wait a minute she just said this this was like yeah. like a, like a couple weeks right um, and, and I didn't know him very well neither of us knew him very well but we all had our own rooms it didn't really matter so the next thing I know like the following week he goes look I'm gonna go get my dog from home and I'm gonna bring it up here it was a basset hound I mean the dog was ridiculous I mean he made soft boiled eggs for the dog and the dog ate wouldn't eat if, if it, had, it had to have peanut butter toast soft every day and you guys didn't do that toast. that's it. right you and the peanut butter toast it. had to be folded in half it wasn't folded oh in half my God. wait was it a beagle was it no bass it was a basset hound oh basset hound basset right and as soon as he left the so thing would howl boy, all day long but anyway sorry I digress so so then I'm like, okay, two out of three. How can you I, even be mad at that dog? Right, and I'm right. The dog. I'm not even allergic. He's adorable. The dog is adorable. He's a person. Um, and so then I said, okay, two out of three. Okay, you know who knows? Maybe who? You know, I still don't know. What. So then I'm thinking, well, see, she didn't get that other thing because I'm a poor college kid with no money. I mean, I came back from Europe with a dime, and I think I had eleven dollars in the bank. I, mean, yeah. I had no money whatsoever. But I was a French major, and so I had these books, and so I was at school and um, at university, and for some reason, one of my, my grammar professor was talking about these books, and she had them. She had one of them right there, and she goes, um, it was, I remember it distinctly, it was a large, almost like an encyclopedia size, it was pretty thick, it was like two or three inches thick, and it was blue, and she said, if you ever get a chance to even look at one of these, you should, because they're extremely rare and very valuable. And I'm looking at it and I'm going, I have one of those at home, I said to her. And she goes, honey, you don't have one of those at home. You know, you can't possibly. Yeah. They're, they're, they're like a thousand dollars and they're very rare. You couldn't possibly have it. And I said, well, okay, I, I think I Anything's have Anything's possible, huh? <laughs> Leave me alone. Right. So I said, I think I do. So I go home. Wait, and, what home? Oh, go, go back to the apartment, the same apartment. In your apartment? <laughs> right, I go back to the apartment and I my, the room that I had um, so this is you know in the mountains in western Massachusetts it was on the north wall and there was a bookcase there and I went over to touch to look to see if the book and it was freezing cold oh my god okay really quick was it cold inside that room 
Uh, no, because it was like a room, you know, it was like Inside a regular room. Apartment. Yeah, but it's against like the wall. But it's against so this wall. With the weather against with, the, You the know, wall. the wind blowing against okay. this wall. So the, the all, probably a lot of the books on the bookcase were cold. And how yeah. cold? Like freezing really, cold. really cold. Like freezing, yeah, because freezing cold. the wind oh, and everything cold. was, the wind and everything would blow against that wall. And they were prefab places that came from Virginia, so they really had no right. business being in that climate. Okay. But no, you could. There was the, like regular heat yeah, okay. in the in the room. Okay. Yeah, I mean, we lived there regularly. But okay. so the, this book was just. I mean, it was absolutely like f- like frozen. Yeah. And all I could think of was, you know, what? How did she do that? How did she know? Wait. That? So what did you do with the book? Yeah. Did you yeah. sell? That's all. Like, did so you sell the book? I didn't sell the book, but I ended up giving it to um, a place where you know I'm so stupid, right? But anyway, I didn't. I didn't want to sell it. Um, I ended up giving it to this place that would preserve it for, that you know, nice, it wouldn't, though. Yeah, that's cool. and it wouldn't, you know, because what was I going to, was I going to sell it and I have money and now I don't know if the person's going to wreck the book or whatever. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah. And it was re- a really cool book, but anyway, so that's, that's that story. Where had you gotten the book? I don't remember where I got this book. I, you know what, I, I, tr- I racked my brain about that. I think someone gave it to me. And I, it was just like a, for this French like book, and so I was thinking, you know, I used to like if somebody gave you a book back then, you kept it. Like now, with right, books are right, not right, quite right, the right, same. Yeah. Or, so I, I, but I don't remember where it came from or anything like that. Um, and me, I, you know, part of me is thinking I don't even remember getting it. You know what I mean? That's I just, kind of odd. It was sort of like just like on the shelf. Yeah, yeah. that's, that's um, odd. crazy. But in the day, in those days, you know, I didn't have anything. I, I would have some clothes and my books were basically all you yeah, had, yeah. right? I remember leaving wow. wherever I went. I would have, you know, my car and my car would have some books yeah. and, and, you know, maybe a, maybe a few dishes or something. But you don't, you didn't have, I didn't have anything. Mm-hmm. And I was happy. I, I didn't care. I didn't want to. Um, the other story I was going to tell is... One more question. Yes. Have you had a tarot card reading since? Well, interest, that's a perfect segue. Yeah, yeah, it's that perfect segue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, people who know me know that I'm a night troller. Um, <laughs> I, the uh, machine works at statement of the year. Yeah, the machine works at odd hours. Right, so I, for some reason I wake up at 3, 4, whatever time in the morning. And I just wake up, and so I, I know I can't go back to sleep right away, so I get on Twitter or on Periscope and just go on Periscope and see what people are doing. Not, not all the time, but, you know, once in a while. So this was just this just happened last week. So I get on Periscope and um, I you know I just scroll through to see what people are doing. And there's a guy reading tarot cards on there, and apparently it was somebody that I follow, but I don't remember following him. And he said he, he I was saying to Rome he has a very he's he's an American, but he's got like this unusual accent, and his voice was like I don't know, it was like silky kind of you know like almost I don't know I don't like yeah. seductive in a way but not I don't mean like not sexually not yeah, sexually yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. something like you soothing like a little and... s- like Svengali kind of like oh you know what is he saying yeah but he was doing somebody else's reading and he was flipping the cards and um I don't know you know I'm just I'm just listening. I'm not even really paying attention to what he's telling this woman. And she's saying, oh, yes, I understand. I agree. Because you're on Periscope. So he's talking and the other person is commenting, commenting in the chat, t- typing things in. So he gets done with her. And then he says, um, I think I'm going to do one more. I know I said I was going to stop, but I thought I think I'm going to do one more. And so he said, if you're interested, put your name in. And there were like 30 or 40 people there. So I'm like, okay, I'll just type in Deborah, you know. He said, we're going to pick me. There's like 40 people here, 30 people here. And so he's shuffling his deck and he goes, I'm going to pick Deborah. I'm like, oh, shit. Why did I put my name in there? Why did I do that? By the way, i got to get on this tarot card Paris. Yeah, it sounds yeah. Yeah, exactly. yeah. Well, he kept saying, I haven't been here in so long. So I must have seen him sometime in the past because I was following him, and I hardly yeah. follow anybody. Mm-hmm. Anyway, he said, I haven't been here probably in a year. Um, so I'm yeah. like, oh, man. So, okay. So he's like, all right, okay. So I'm like, okay. And I, and I tend to believe, but I also tend to be fairly skeptical because mm-hmm. I'm a fairly practical person. So Well, there's so many know. of the scam of fake ones. Yeah. And it's yeah. so, so yeah. rare to find them. So, real. and like the, with the cold book, it's like, ooh, you know, yeah, she yeah. was real. But yeah, you know, totally. anyway, so... He says, oh, so he starts shuffling the deck. He goes, um, okay, well, there's somebody here. Um, I think it's your I think it's your mother. Your mother's here. Has your mother passed? And I said, yes, yeah, she's Wait, passed. So he's also a medium? Yeah, that's... Yeah, yeah, he's a medium. That's what he's using the cards, actually, as a Got medium. Oh, right, okay. sorry. Yeah, I should have said that. Um, 
So he uses, yeah, he uses the cards as, that's right, I didn't even think of that. You're right, yeah. Because um, the whole thing is weird. And I, the, when the lady before me was getting her reading, I'm thinking, I wonder if she's like taping it or writing it down or yeah. something, you know? Because it's like, he's saying all these things and it's easy for it to just go by, yeah. right? Um, and was and he so, getting it right for her? Was she like, She was oh saying God. yes, right. Wow. Yeah. yeah. And she knew him. It was her birthday and they, he, he apparently knew her. So yeah. anyway, so he says, your mother's here. And he said, she has a G name. Is that right? Now, people who know my mother yeah. know, know her as Patricia right. or Tricia. Right. But that was really her middle name. Her first name is Genevieve, right. which is begins with a G. So I'm like, okay. What an obscure letter. Right, G. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, yeah. can't right. say a letter. For someone's something. mother. Yeah, that's crazy. Right. And, and Genevieve is, you yeah. know, not, not a not real a common, common name, name right? Yeah. How many girls' names even begin with G? I don't know. So anyway, I'm like, okay, she's here. So he said to me, she's showing me. He said, oh, she's really animated. I'm like, yep, that's her. And um, he said, oh, she's she's showing me around where she passed. There's all these things of water. And, you know, there's bowls of water all around. And honestly, I have no idea what that is. But there's bowls of water. So I got to, you know, yeah. who knows? This was only last week. And then he said, um, oh, he said, now she wants me to tell you that something she didn't approve of before, she does approve of now. Do you know what that could be? And I said, I don't. I you said, like typed in the chat. Like, yeah, I said, I, I don't know. And he yeah. goes, well, I don't know either, but she's really making it clear that whatever she didn't like before, she likes now and it's okay. So you should just go for it full steam. And I said, well, I am working on maybe a book. And he said, well, she's saying don't go back and edit anything. Just keep writing and writing and writing, and the book's going to be very successful. I'm like, okay, whatever. And then he said, now, what's the deal with you and mirrors? And I said, well, what do you mean? And he said, well, she's showing me all these mirrors. And she said, you don't like mirrors. And I'm like, well, it's not that I don't like them I just I'm not you know I'm not the kind of person who spends a lot of time looking in the mirror just just how I am and he said well she's just showing me mirrors and mirrors and mirrors and mirrors and I said well you know she was a very vain person and she you know cared a lot about her appearance so maybe it's that and he said well I'm here to I'm not here to help you figure it out I'm just here to report what the person's telling me and um, you know, there may have been some other things, but that's all I could remember wow. from that. And then so he said, so, so she just keeps showing me the mirrors and she's, she's leaving now. She's going. And I said, well, you know, thank you very much. And then he said, he had this big glass of water or something. It didn't look like water. It looked like iced tea or something like that. And he goes, oh, I'm so thirsty. He's like that. That spirit, she just drained me of all my water. I'm just like, she said, he said, I'm so dry. What is with that? I'm like, true. I don't know. I, don't know. I know nothing. Nice. I know nothing. So, does that have any significance? The water thing? I don't know. I think she's just very high energy. Like, if you're a medium and you're channeling someone that's that it's high energy, it's taking me it's it's taking yours and me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's wow. High energy. Yeah. I can't believe that happened last week. It was so weird. Wow. So when you said, oh, do you have yeah, a ghost story? That, I said, I, I couldn't believe when you said that. Do you want to do the podcast what? with a ghost story? Because it, like, literally just happened, like, the night, oh, either yeah. the night before or, or two nights before. That is that's wild. crazy. It is so wild. weird when you said that. So. Oh, wow. Yeah. So I've had a couple of, um, I was telling Rome that I live in New York and there's a place called Lilydale, which is a place where mediums can live in a village. Mm -hmm. And so oh, could yeah. you imagine that village? Check this. Yeah, that's crazy. Could you imagine that? What? And you told me, but I didn't hear about it. So Lilydale is, um, it's probably, ha in, the, in the summer, in the warm weather, there's probably, I would say, I'm guessing, but I'd say maybe 100 mediums that live there. And um, some of them come for like two weeks. It's like the Harvard for mediums. It's like the Harvard for yeah. mediums. And there's, you know, they support each other and there's um, certifications and credentialing. It's, it's very different than you might imagine. Um, but I've had two different readings. But the last lady that, that I read, 
the, the who read me, she when I went to her, um, she said, you know, you are as intuitive as I am, and you could be doing what I'm doing. And I said, oh no, that's way too scary for mm. me. You know, I would not want to do that. Mm. But the lady that the fir- who read it the first time, she goes, you are audiophilic. I said, well, what in the name of hell is that? Clear audio? Yeah, and she said, you don't necessarily see ghosts, they you hear, hear them. them. And so ever since she said that, I've paid a lot of attention to that. And I have some level of ringing in my ears because I'm you know, not a kid anymore. And I listen to a lot of very loud music for a lot of years. Um, so, so I don't know if it's that, but I can tell you that it, um, I have the, um, like, it's not a deja vu because that's something different. Um, and I have those. Um, it, this is like, it's very, very, very creepy, although I'm trying to, like, embrace it. Yeah, be open to it. So instead of being afraid of it, yeah. trying to, like, go Pretend with it. it doesn't exist. But yeah. it's a sound, and it sounds, it first sounds like this. Like, really loud. Mm-hmm. Like, someone's trying to talk, but God. it's getting warped. Oh. Like that. But I, uh, like, I know Is there's... Is it in one ear or both ears? No, it's in both. Oh, okay. Yeah. And, what, um... How often does this happen? It happens kind of a lot lately. What, like, once a week, once a day? I like, would say a, a couple times a week. And, and it's like someone's trying to say hello, but it's getting warped. And yes. Have you ever tried to just sit down and, and listen like, and block? Well, yeah, and just, like, sit in peace and be like, I'm, I'm open and I want to listen? Have you tried to actually... No, because I'm too scared. Yeah. Don't be scared. It's pretty scary, though. Yeah, but you don't have to be scared. So it's happening more now than it used to? Way more now than it used to. I would say in the last year. And do you think that's because you're just more open to it? Yeah, like have you noticed ever since you've been more accepting of it that it happens more? I think I think it's because I'm not so um, overwhelmed and exhausted all the time. Mm-hmm. And I think I'm just more at peace with myself. And so the ability for this sound, but you know, I, I can try this, which is when it happens, and I, it doesn't happen at any particular time of the day. Like it's not like it's first thing in the morning right. or late at night or. Um, there's no rhyme or reason. There's no, I, that I can see. Mm. That no, there's no pattern that I can I'm see. I'm sure you can look up online too. If you think that you're a clairaudient, like what's the best way for me to start like tapping into that, you know? Like, what's the best energy approach to, like, sit down and let whoever's trying to talk to me talk to me? Well, I can tell you that... I know it's scary, but, like, yeah. just try it. Yeah. And then if it terrifies you, don't do it Don't do it, do it right. Mm. So yeah. I can tell you that I do a fair amount of uh, volunteer work. Mm. And also, so sort of spiritually, my way of being in the world is if I meet someone, then if I can bring the light of the people that love that person to them Mm -hmm. so i feel like it passes through me and it's like it's not any effort at all yeah so it might be somebody behind the counter it might be somebody whose business i'm helping it could be a complete stranger it could be somebody i love but i it's always the same process which i almost empty myself out it's like i don't even really realize i'm doing it Hmm. and then these words just come out of my mouth and they're like and they said, oh, how do you, why, you know, that's like the perfect thing. That's what I need to hear. I'm like, it doesn't have anything to do with me. I didn't, I'm not saying it. So in a way, you know, like this guy, he was saying when he saw the mirrors of the bowls with water, it's like a symbol. So it's almost like I'm empty and it's just coming through. Yeah, it's not. You're a vessel. Right. I'm not even really. And so I they say to people, look. I don't know what I said. I mean, I'm not saying I have no memory of it. I'm just saying I didn't, like, you plan that out. Yeah. Or, yeah. So, you know, if you want to write it down or whatever, you're going to have to. Because don't come back and ask me because I have no idea. Yeah. Wow. So I think I'm practicing it in a way, mm-hmm. but not That's not so this, not that. It's making me really and scared it's, to it's, hear that. Yeah, I'm sure. And it's always that sound? It's always that same sound or a variation on that like, sound. That's like making... Is it ever in Like I'm public? having a physical reaction to that. Public. In public, like around other people, where you hear that yeah. distinct sound and you're like, that couldn't have been anyone else. I just heard the... Mm, that, that as voice. a rule, it doesn't happen in public, but it can happen anytime. Yeah. It's happened... 
as I said, morning, noon, and night. Uh, the scariest time is if I'm awake at night, oh which God, I think yeah, is how yeah. I've come to be on Periscope. Yeah. Because if I'm just there and Silence. I'm just like, you know, I can't go back to sleep, it's like, I don't want that sound to come. But maybe I can embrace it in a new way. Yeah. That Well, maybe it's just someone that really wants to talk to you. Yeah. Yeah, it might be mm-hmm. up, like one person. One person mm-hmm. just right. Wants to talk. And there, there's, there's that theory about um, time is um, not linear. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah, everything this has happened. Mm-hmm. Sorry? Yeah, there's lots of those theories. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So if that, it, you know, if you believed in one of those theories, you could say that You're same in an thing. Alternate dimension, right? Right. Next to like ours. I'm. You're just lining up. Yeah. Right. Time. You know, it happens to go by, and mm-hmm. I happen to be yeah. have my ear yeah. to the wall yeah. at the yeah. time when well, that other thing is happening. Cool. You seem to be a, a being that is very open, open to it, yeah. and like available. Yeah. Right. So whether it's a, a, you know, a spirit or whether it's, you know, this multidimensional time thing or whatever, you know, it doesn't really matter because, well, you know, as long as it's being used for good and, yeah. po- and, and positive and powerful, then that's, that's good, you know. Mm. Wow. Yeah. Those are great stories. <laughs> well, I, there's something that I kind of have always kind of realized about myself but only said it out loud mm-hmm. recently and it's funny, Deb's story is making me think of it. So it's I I will often see something happen before it happens. That's crazy. But it will it will manifest in a different way. And I only very recently told Colin about it. I was like, this happens to me. It's always happened to me, um, but it happens to me regularly. Where um, and I've got to listen to my intuition more because um, it, it just happened the other day. I. Um, I saw my favorite wine glass sitting, sorry, my favorite wine glass was in the cupboard and I saw another wine glass that I don't enjoy using so much because I'm weird like that on the dish rack. And I thought, I'm gonna get a glass of wine. I should use that wine glass. Yeah. But I was like, no, I'm gonna be an asshole and get my special wine glass. So I grabbed my special wine glass and as I grabbed it, I shut the, cupboard and it got caught and smashed and I was like that was my body that was everything in me telling me to not grab the glass (laughs) at the time and that shit happens all the time like I I, sometimes I get really worried because it's it's literally always right if I listen to it Mm -hmm. Um, and I've learned to listen to it but I now um, sometimes get very terrifying flashes of mm. car crashes and stuff if I'm Jeez. like about to jump on the freeway and I will get, I've gotten yep. off the freeway off. many times yep. because I'm like, I do not want that yep. one to come true. Yep. And so I will avoid things or if I'm oh like walking God. down the street, I will cross the street yeah. if I have yeah. like a flash of something that's like, don't, you know, don't get that wine glass, use this wine glass. If yeah, I get that, reason. if I get that sense, if I'm walking down the street or driving or about to reach for something, I'm like, I'm gonna wait and I'm gonna come back and do that later. Yeah, you know, and it happens often. We were talking about in the last episode about um, deja vu and how we think one theory is like in your past life something very similar to what you're experiencing the deja vu of happened, and so you're reliving it. Right. So what makes me like tripped out about that is like all these instances where you're having these these kind of moments where you have a feeling of knowing what's going to happen or what might happen or what could happen if you do something makes me feel like that's like it applies you know like maybe in some past life all of these instances happened and you didn't listen to any of them mm-hmm. and they all happened can i tell you my story mm-hmm. yeah yes. so the only time i guess the the time that got me most like open to everything so i've always been relatively open mm-hmm. you know that yeah. and like weird stuff has always happened but the weirdest And the thing that finally pushed me over the edge of like, this is a good thing and this is cool. And all of my college roommates were like making fun of me. It was about a week or two weeks or something that was happening. So it started off that I went to class and it was a history class, which I'm terrible at. It was like art history or something. And he started, our teacher started writing on the board like any other day. And I flipped to a new blank page of my notebook. So I'm at my current page of notes, yesterday's notes flip the page and there's like two and a half pages of notes already taken and I was like okay tight uh maybe I don't remember this day and as he starts drawing things on the board they are in my notebook yes in my handwriting in my pen 
and every single thing that he says and is drawing you like free yes so i started all i was trying not to freak out and the kid next to me was his name was jake he was on the baseball team i just look over i'm like yo did we already take these notes and he was like no I, this is like this is new stuff today so i'm like sick tight sick okay. sick so i'm looking at my notes every word for word like i took the notes already so i'm trying not to freak out close my notebook you know go home for the day or whatever and i'm telling like jackie and i'm like the weirdest fucking thing happened to me like i don't i don't know how to explain it but like i'm just gonna try and chalk it up as whatever because i don't know what else to do with it yeah. And then we sat down. We were watching like Cheaters or like some show, oh, some I yeah. Show. But it, I don't, I don't think it Joey was that. Gekka. But it yeah. was like you know some like the challenge or like some MTV yeah. show, something. And it was new that night, and we had never seen it before. And yet I knew everything that was going to happen. Mm-hmm. I did the same thing, and I was like, mm-hmm. "Is this day. is this last week's episode?" And mm-hmm. she was like, "No, this is new." Mm-hmm. And I'm like, "You got to yeah. be fucking kidding me!" Yeah. So. It's little thing. Those it was the notes that was the biggest. Oh, that's, that's yeah. crazy. That's but, physical proof. But physical for proof. the rest of that like week or two, my friends were like dying laughing at me. How's the how's the power of the universe going, Jenna? And right, I'm like, right, right. it's actually fucking sick because I got straight A's in every class. <laughs> I, it was like I had already known all of the material. Yeah. I had already taken all the tests. And I was getting so many fucking A's and I was like, please stay forever, power of the universe. Right. And then it finally went away. Yeah. But I was having these like experiences of like i have literally already done this right but those notes in my notebook was like the most how, next level how, how is it explained i like, don't there's no way no. To she might have like slept walked and then gone no the only way that you, what that's not an, explanation? Why is no. that not an explanation no the because only she hadn't been to the class she hadn't heard it right in her in her her dream. pictures Maybe she's no living in her no dream. the only way that i've been able that's why i feel like i'm so open because my yeah. biggest uh, experience the, although these aren't really ghost stories they're just like yeah, weird, weird. No, it's just weird. Story. yeah, yeah. 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 my biggest experience yeah, has stories. been so incredibly positive like yeah it was scary yeah yeah i can't explain it yeah. but i was like this is fucking dope yeah. i feel like a human 2.0 but because it was so positive then i feel after that you're like open you're okay yeah, with things, yeah. you know like it's yeah. jarring but um wow. yeah i can't i have no idea That's crazy. yeah and you never That's... know um you know what what it's trying to do yeah yeah or or why, why it's yeah. happening yeah no the only way that i was ex- sorry to answer your question explaining it is like maybe i just shifted into another mm-hmm. parallel dimension right or maybe i was in a parallel dimension and took right. this and somehow i have my notebook from it yeah dimension. but in the parallel dimensions that like you never know you never know, know. portals can exist you don't anywhere. know like, if it could you could but you could be moved. portal jenna is sitting for the same art history class or no maybe the books just got switched you yeah. know what i mean like something that Anything. small Really could be yeah, minuscule, cool. right? And like it you put was it in your backpack, but the portal during, is in your backpack. Yeah, for just a during, it's like super cool. That idea, yeah. that yeah. day, like, all true. of a sudden, now you're experiencing something right. you've already. And it was only you know two weeks of, amount yeah. of time. Yeah. Right. It was right. fucking insane. I just realized another thing that happens to me, really a lot, and but I'm in denial about it, and I, I'm just only saying it now because you guys are reminding me. Mm-hmm. I'll be singing a song in the car, and I turn the radio, oh. and it's on. And yeah, it's on that song is on. Does that happen yeah. to you? Yeah, it's happened to me. But it's, it's like a really to me, obscure but yeah. song. Yeah. But but not it's like happened pop to me like radio. once or twice. Like, oh yeah, no, it, it happens to me a lot. Yeah. Yeah. And every time it happens, I'm like, oh, there it did it again. Yeah. Yeah. Oh no, no, no. But it doesn't happen that much. But now what I'm yeah. thinking about, oh, yeah, it, yeah. And it's like, how can that? How could that possibly uh, be? How I can't. How can I know that that song's on there? These these things of like. Like that. It's not like a popular song. I don't listen to popular no, yeah, it's music, right? I'm, I'm like, yeah. I'm listening to oldies and all kinds of weird stuff. Yeah. You know? I don't so know. go ahead. No, I was just going to say, like, things like that and, um, and the, the sort of thing you were talking about, like, when you kind of have an idea of what's going to happen, if you, if you listen to it, it'll happen. Those are are the closest experiences that I, I've had to anything like right. this. And those are so minimal, and I think they're minimal because when they happen, I try to just like not think right. about it. Right. I'm like, that was a weird coincidence. But then it happens again and it's again. Not a right. and I'm like, I kind of know deep right. down that it's not a coincidence. Right. But at the same time, I think it's going to take too much out of me to try to figure out yeah. what it is. Yeah. I don't and so have those. I, yeah, I have so, intuition. Yeah. But like, I like to think that if I'm scared of something, if I think of every possible scenario, that means it's not going to happen. Yeah, right. For sure. I'm like, well, because I just thought of it, now it jinxed everything. Yeah, right. It's right. not going to happen. Yeah. Right. I saw um, the biggest example of of what happens to me is I saw 
um, our car accident before yeah. we had it, which is why I said when you said, whenever yeah. I have that feeling, I get off the freeway yeah. because um, we were driving from my sister's house in Hollywood back to uh, where Colin and I lived at the time in, in Santa Monica. So we were coming down the hill of the 405 into into Santa Monica, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. And that like hill in the rain, never rains in LA, and when it does, the roads get really slick and dangerous right. because the oil builds right. up uh, uh, months with no yeah. rain. And um, we were driving on the 101, hadn't even got on the 405 yet. Um, so for anyone who doesn't live in LA would understand that's like, you know, 10 minutes, 15 minutes. At between. least. And I was, we were driving, Colin was driving, and we had the two dogs in the car. And I thought to my, I, I saw, I had visions of a car. There was, you know, it, there was rain, there was, it was spinning, there was broken glass, mm. the dog was in the back. I mean, it was all mm. very, you know, and I kind of started panicking, but I was like, no, just block it out, you know. Um, and then 10 minutes later, we had an accident that didn't resemble the what I saw. It was nowhere near as bad. But it was but it was, it was an accident in the fast lane on the 405 where, you know, we locked up. Like, mm. there was a car spinning mm, right down and so everyone slammed mm-hmm. on their brakes to avoid that car and our brakes locked up and we just smashed into you know two cars and and you know i mean i was i that's, wasn't hurt that's bad that's that I mean, was plenty that well, was yeah, but, yeah, I mean, like, but you funny. saw the spinning i like, saw the spinning crazy. But, but that wasn't our car but spinning. it doesn't matter no like, i know, I know. So that's, crazy. It, that was when i was like I mean, it, I've always seen stuff moments before, but this was one that gave me enough time that I should have thought, we need to get off the freeway. Mm-hmm. And since then, right, there's been times not. where I'm not even driving and I'm like, we need to get off the freeway. Mm-hmm. We, need to, we need to change streets. We need to change this situation right now because, you know, and people think I'm fucking crazy. Right. And Colin's like, oh, Rome, crazy. nothing's going to happen. Right. I don't think always trust it. And always as we were, literally, it. as we were hitting, I was like, I saw this. I knew this was going to happen. I knew this. That's all I was yelling. I knew this was going to happen. I knew this was going to And Colin was like, what are you talking about? And I literally saw it minutes before it happened. It's crazy. Yeah. And that's when I was like, okay, I wow. really have to listen to this. Yeah. Right. And if it is um, you know, s- someone who's watching over you, right. let's just say, whatever right. that is. Yeah. And I kind of believe see that those something things. like that that someone's kind of giving So, me. you know, to listen to that. Like you're, what you were just saying, Julian, when you have that... Don't like block Je- it out. Right. Block Jen- out. Jenna's right if we can listen to it. Like mm-hmm. the other day, I just got off the highway. It was pouring rain. I got off the highway by mistake on a road. I didn't mean to get off there. And it was like, okay, I'm supposed to go on this road. Yes. Yeah. Yes. No, no, that's, that's exactly Just it. stay right <laughs> yeah, here yeah, yeah. and go slowly. Something got me off the freeway at that time. You were, you were lost in My thought and sucked. something like intervened with your decision. Right. And yeah. I got off at a place. I never get off yeah, there. Yeah. Right. And yeah. so, but I got off and I'm like, okay, this yeah. is good. I but belong right. here. Like that right? lesson of yeah. like actually just trying to be aware of it. Yeah. Right. Like and so just listen, embracing it. Listen to it because it's, it's, it, yeah. it, wh- whatever it is, it's guiding you. Yeah. And you're it's right to be reason. not so, <laughs> to don't be afraid. You yeah. Know? Fuck. That's well, why any, anytime anything's happening to me, I'm like, oh, I guess I'm just supposed to do this right now. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that is. That's because I've only like that. had you're positive like... experiences, you know? I, guess I always say this about Jenna. Bad. I don't know if you've heard me say this about Jenna, but one th- one of the things I love so much about her, but this also applies right now, is uh, no matter what situation we're in, there will always be a point where she says, well, at least... Right. And then say something about the silver lining of what's going on. Right. And it, it's like literally there's no moment where she doesn't do that. Like there's mm. always a situation where something you've seen it mm. goes wrong and every time yeah. it's, well, every at time. least something this. Right. And like it's... Definitely, you, like, I mean, but that's so it's it's the best way to be, it's yeah. To, the like, best try way to be. and turn every negative, but it's, it's not even conscious. Yeah, it's, it's lost, like, we're on an adventure, yeah. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's why I yeah. was saying, yeah. like, the surprise around, we'd be completely lost, yeah. so lost. Mom, are we lost? No, we're having no. an adventure, no, we're having an adventure, and I'm like, oh my god, we're all gonna die. Me and my brother back there, like, hell yeah. Mom knows how to make a party in the car. Woo. <laughs> um, well, thank you both for like doing this. Yeah, this, this was, was fun. like really, yeah, really unexpectedly you. awesome. Yeah, it was fun. Um, like I, I didn't, I, I was expecting to kind of be like creeped out, but I didn't expect to like kind of learn things and like, mm. you know, kind of reflect 
I like that. Mm. So thank you guys. Thanks, mm. Mackle. Thank you. Thanks, Mackle. Thanks, Mackle. And, and I can't wait amazing. to hear what people tell us. Yeah. 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 Comments yeah. are like, incredible. God. Yeah, yeah. That's totally. Because really I guarantee so there's going to be a ton of people that are like, I yeah. totally get that. Right. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. Right. And the to learn that. Yeah. 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 There was a commenter in the last one that was Claire audience and says it was really annoying for her and she would politely have to tell them to fuck off sometimes. I'm sure. That's so crazy. The Dink fam was crazy. Shout out to last Dink fam commenter. Yeah. yeah. Think fam freaking rocks totally. Well thank totally. you guys for watching and listening and yeah. putting up with us recording in a hotel. And thank you sponsors. Thank you sponsors. Check the sponsors out below. They're awesome. And uh, we'll be back in front of the green screen next week. Yeah. Talking about other stuff. This was a fun little was yeah, fun. Yeah, think, yeah. Think, bedroom think, chat. Think, I guess for now we'll, we'll travel with a little better think, audio, think, maybe. Think, think, but yeah. Think, well, I think, mean, to think. be fair, we came prepared we and came prepared, our yeah. equipment pooped think, out of think, us. Think, so. think, it was, think, the think, think, think. It it was the ghost. It was the ghost trying to It was meant to happen. Yeah, it's the gremlins, right? Yeah. That's what I call them. They're the mischievous ghosts, the gremlins, right? Yeah, exactly. They try to intervene and make things go. See you guys next week. Bye. Love you.